pets. Everyone loves them. They are so fluffy, so adorable, so big-eyed, so floozy, so snoozy, and overall, just so cute. But what is cute? What are the specific characteristics of things we as humans consider as cute? What is the emotion behind the all sounds? And this is what we want to discover in this video. So we want to do a social experiment to find out the truth behind cuteness. In order to get interviews with realistic reactions from people, we have decided to bring Angelina's dog, Ruby. This is the puppy mission. This will be our experimental setup. After school, we will first set up a station next to the exit of the Ray Hall by borrowing chairs and tables from the second floor. We will then set up a tripod next to the scene and for filming, we use the Canon EW83H lens camera. To attract interviews, our group has put together an advertisement sign saying 30 seconds of bedtime in exchange of 30 seconds of interview time. Speaking of interview questions, we have also prepared a series of questions to interview others such as the ones listed above, with some follow-up questions, as usual. So here we were, at 4.30pm, preparing for the arrival of the customers, and we didn't have to wait long. Enough interacting, let's take a look at our experiment results. What do you like about cute things? Uh, like, uh, round and, and have furry fur. Or like soft, uh -huh. I know, warm, things like that. You have like big eyes and like furry hair and it just looks so cute. Like it, lo it looks like you need some someone to protect it. Yeah. 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 A sense of uh, love, joy, so much joy, yeah. <laughs> and happiness. These participants described common emotions when they are interacting with Ruby, and they are excited, protective, and heartwarming. So, the emotion we feel when we interact with something cute is identical. So, we did some research. The cute emotion is basically how humans respond to something that has similar traits of a baby, such as big round eyes, small size, and softness. According to this article, the characteristics are involved in human parental care, because these characteristics are very similar to a human baby. This is a baby. It has big eyes, not adult like ratio between head and body, small in size, soft and squishy skin. And this is a cat. It also has big eyes. It also has a non adult like ratio between hand and body, also small in size, half soft and squishy fur. This does not only apply to cats. Look at this item on Taobao. It also has big eyes, also has a non adult like ratio between hand and body, also small in size. These cute little things are surprisingly similar, but it also makes sense. This is why we feel protective towards something we consider cute. It is because they look like a human baby and evoke our protectiveness to protect them. So the mystery behind the awe has been solved, or has it? 
This part of the experiment seems off and uncanny. Have you ever wanted to squeeze something cute in your mind, like imagination, not to the point that you hurt them? Yes, all the time. Um, I think that I just want to soak up like all of it, and I want, I want more yeah. of it, and that's like the way I would get more is if I could squeeze yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, like give him a squeeze. Like, yeah. Like, oh yeah. Right now, I feel like doing it. <laughs> Why are they doing this to Ruby? Why are they acting so aggressively? The phenomenon of wanting to harm but not actually wanting to hurt a cute thing is called cute aggression. This is usually when you feel attacked or overwhelmed by the positive feelings from its cuteness. This kind of response is also an example of dimorphous expression of emotions. Dimorphous expression means when you experience a strong emotion but express the opposite emotion. For example, tears of joy is also an example of dimorphous expression. This is when you feel too happy, you tear up a bit. Our body reacts this way because by reacting oppositely to a strong emotion, it makes sure you don't become overwhelmed by this emotion. So dimorphous expression, such as cute aggression, acts as a mechanism to regulate your mental state. So it is completely normal and not immoral to want to squeeze a cute thingy. Although being cute has many advantages, but being cute isn't always good. Cuteness hurts animals because some people would purposefully modify and select certain traits of animals through crossbreeding, which is called artificial selection. For example, one type of cat, which is called the Scottish Fold, has folded ears that people considered as cute. However, the reason that their ears are folded is that they have a certain cartilage mutilation making them vulnerable to injuries and disease. Profit-driven companies would force the Scottish folds to reproduce with each other due to their popularity among customers, causing their trade to be passed on to their offspring which became the easy targets of significant painful diseases. Cuteness can also be dangerous because it makes us biased towards certain animals. Cute animals can gain more favor from human beings, but are they really better than other less cute animals? Do they really deserve this special treatment? According to a study in the UK, adults are more likely to donate money to causes represented by photos of charismatic species rather than non-charismatic species, which will result in reducing the biodiversity of the environment because people are not lending support to animals that is less famous or is considered less cute. So this is a serious problem in our present society. So, because some animals have traits similar to that of a human baby, such as having big eyes, being fluffy, and just cute in general, we tend to associate them with the ideas of innocence and helplessness, believing that they need our support and thus preferring them over other not as cute animals. However, when we are considering and choosing between the lives of species, we should avoid letting subjective human emotions to influence our decisions, but instead consider them to be of the same importance. To sum it up, we usually view something as cute when they have big round eyes, small size, and softness. This is because these traits are similar to human babies, which make us want to protect them. However, sometimes we also want to harm these little things, not because humans are naturally evil, or maybe they are, but because our body doesn't want you to feel overwhelmed by such a strong feeling, so it makes you react in an opposite emotion. However, cuteness can also pose a threat to the general health and biodiversity of the animal population. Cuteness can harm the overall health of animals because private companies selectively breed animals that have mutations that made them cute and spread their genes to their offsprings, which will be vulnerable to injuries and diseases. Cuteness can also decrease biodiversity because it is shown that people are more likely to invest in cute and charismatic animals rather than other less cute animals.
which cause a harm to the biodiversity of the general animal population. Therefore, cuteness is also very dangerous. This shows us that cuteness, just like everything else, is just like a coin. I have a front side, I have a back side. They always have two opposite sides, they always have a good side and a bad side. And so we should consider all things. We should not only look at the good side, but also its negative effects. Thank you very much.